Welcome to Crystal Waters International Ministries, where we are impacting the world with Christ's love. Today, get set to hear the life-changing living Word of God. As Denise L. Adams teaches the living Word, your life will be impacted and transformed. And now, here's Pastor Denise. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Crystal Waters Spiritual Institute. We are a division of Crystal Waters International Ministries. We uh, have awesome online teachings for you to help you in every area of your life as a Christian. And I'm excited. Tonight is prophetic prayer, and I have a wonderful teaching for you. It's the eight aspects of prayer. Hallelujah. This is a first class in prophetic prayer. Now, I did a class before. The Holy Spirit came upon me and he released a word about being in his presence and praying uh, uh, continuously, prayer without ceasing, according to Thessalonians. And that's an awesome teaching. I, I hope you get that. That's sort of the, 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 the intro before this first class. And I'm planning on six classes. We'll see what the Holy Spirit has in store. I'm just going to go by the Spirit of the living God and allow him to do what he loves to do. Well, our first uh, point in the aspects of prayer, let me just just open in prayer. How about that? Let's just open in prayer. Father, I thank you for this living word. I declare this word shall go forth in the name of Jesus. I bind every demonic force sent against this word going out, and I declare you have no opportunity to uh, change this word or to limit this word in any way in the name of Jesus Christ I thank you Holy Spirit for anointing my lips to preach this word to share this word to teach this word enter into that their hearts and transform their lives in Jesus name amen well praise God we're talking about eight aspects of prayer You know, many times uh, we go into a prayer room and and many times we're not prepared in our heart to pray. We've come with a day full of um, situations, you know, um, whatever they are. uh, Good things happen, bad things happen. We're distracted with Sister Susie or or Brother Bob or whatever it is. And we need to come in prepared to pray. When you come in to pray in in a corporate setting or even by yourself that you set aside a time to pray. I'm going to show you eight aspects of prayer that will help you to become um, more effective in your prayer life, more um, explosive in his goodness. And I know it transformed my life and I know that it will transform your life. Glory to God. Well, the first point we have tonight regarding coming into the prayer room is to pray from your position of power. God has positioned you for power. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse uh, 15 through, I believe, 22. Lord, why don't you just turn there in your Bible with me? And we're going to look at that word tonight. Glory to God. And we're just going to see how, uh, how Paul prayed for the Ephesians. In verse 15, it says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus... And love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you and make mention of you in my prayers. Hallelujah. That's a word in itself, isn't it? Verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over the church, over all things rather, to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Wow, that is a huge scripture, and I encourage you uh, to pray that prayer over your life 
you know, two, three times a day because God will open you up to revelation, inspiration, understanding, and knowledge of him. And that's what we need. In this first point, we're talking about praying from your position of power. Now, if you look in verse uh, 19, we see this, it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And it talks about being far above. Well, let's look at that. He's, he has released a power, the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead and set him at his right hand, not halfway up, not a quarter of a way up, but all the way high above in heavenly places at the Father's right hand, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in the world, but also in that which is to come. Not even at this time, but in that which is to come. So there is no time that is, this, there's no time limitation on this prayer. I mean, God has raised us up to put us in a place, hallelujah, so far above Oh, every name, every situation, every demonic realm, we're so far above it all that uh, this is our position that we come to him in. It's a position of power that we come in prayer, that we actually live in 24-7. Can I say that one to you? Hallelujah. We need to be aware of our exalted position in Christ. Glory to God and have confidence in what Christ has done for us as we may meditate on this word as it becomes alive in us it becomes more effectual we well, see we've been given authority and power and we've been seated in a position of royalty far above every power dominion might in this time and in the time to come can i say that again far above see we're in a, a realm totally totally above anything of the enemy now it's a totally different dimension the enemy cannot operate in this dimension sickness and disease cannot operate in this dimension lack cannot operate in this uh, this dimension it just can't operate we're far above it so when we decree and when we declare and when we speak hallelujah it has a force and effect because it is in a higher kingdom glory to god well, that leads me to my second point is we're to pray as royalty. Hallelujah. We know in Revelation chapter 1 verses 5 and 6, it says that Jesus has washed us in his blood, in his very own blood, and made us kings and priests unto our God. And what that means is we have a kingly position. So when we come into prayer, we come in as kings of our God, priests of our God. Hallelujah. We come in in that dimension. You don't come in as, uh, you know, uh, something lower. You come in your exalted position that Christ has put you in. Hallelujah. When you know what he's done for you, when you come to pray, you come in a different dimension. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Now we know in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and uh, I'm already there. If you got your Bible out, get it on out and flip over to First uh, Peter 2, verse 9. You need to see this in your word afresh. It says, but you, put your name in there. I'm going to put my name in. Denise, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that Denise should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Glory to God. Well, there you are. There's two scriptures on that. We see that we are in um, a, a, a position of royalty. We walk as royalty. We talk as royalty. We are a royal priesthood, you know, and uh, it's a very, very honorable place that God has put us in by his, by his blood and by his grace and by his mercy. Hallelujah. But when you come into prayer, Let's come in that way. So we're coming in, understanding the position of power we come in. Everything's under our feet. When we come in, we're coming in as royalty, as kings and priests unto our God. You see, when a king comes in and decrees a thing, he makes a declaration. 
when he sets something in place, a law in place, it must come to pass. And when we go to God's word and we decree a thing, it shall come to pass. Glory to God. It shall happen. And that's marvelous. If you look at that, that's marvelous. When we know that that's going to happen, we have a kingly status. Glory to God. Can you receive that word? Say yes and amen, Denise. I can receive it. Our next point, point three, is to pray with confidence. In um, Hebrews chapter 4, 16 verses, no, verse 16, in the um, English Standard Version, I'm reading from that version right now. It says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. See, we come, we're coming. Okay, we're coming in power. We're coming as royalty. Now we're coming with confidence. Hallelujah. Because of the blood of Jesus, that we can draw near to this throne of grace to obtain, to obtain, to receive mercy and find the grace that we need to help in the time of need. God is there. God is there. Hallelujah. God is there to, to give, give out help to us because of his mercy, because of his grace. We can come with faith. Now, a, a pastor friend of mine told me and taught me years ago, he says, Denise, faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. So we have faith and uh, God's word has faith actually built right into it. It's, it's designed that way. It's spirit and it is life. So when we hear the word of God, as even you're hearing tonight, there's enough faith in it to allow it to come to pass. You just have to say, yes, I received that word. Say, yes, I've got it. Well, the second point he made was confidence comes by seeing. So when you see a miracle or when you see someone pray and you see something come to pass, glory to God, you receive confidence in that word. Amen? Amen. Third part is boldness. Boldness comes by doing. When you are a doer of God's word, you will become bold as a lion. I remember the very first time I ever saw a miracle. You know, I heard the words. I saw the word in the Bible. I saw the word. I heard the word. But when I saw a miracle, I got some confidence. I really got some confidence. It was awesome. And then when uh, I was told to get up there and I pray for someone. And uh, when I prayed and miracles happened, my goodness, I got bold as a lion. Now, I remember the time I was, I was, I was. I was a baby Christian and all of this, and I got called to the front to to do that, to actually pray for someone. I thought, oh, oh my goodness. So someone had a big swollen knee, and uh, I was to pray for their knee because they couldn't bend it. It was hurting. They couldn't walk. And uh, the the pastor at the time says, now you pray for her and put your hand on her knee, and you pray boldly, and uh, God's going to bring it to pass. Well, I prayed, and I prayed boldly, and the lady kind of screamed. And I, I, you know, I just kind of recoiled backwards. I thought, oh, no. And uh, we didn't see anything happen. I thought, oh, no, Lord, Lord, I made a mistake. I'm so sorry. Lord, forgive me. Well, the lady was really mad at me, and she was really mad at the pastor. But you know what? She came back on the second day of the conference, and she apologized to the pastor, and she apologized to me because her knee was completely healed. And she was completely set free. All the pain was gone. All the swelling was gone. It was completely restored. And uh, I got boldness that day. You know, it didn't look like things are going right. But, you know, God's word is God's word. It will come to pass. And I was praying in faith. Hallelujah. And there was boldness upon me. So you just go and do what you need to do with compassion and mercy for other people. And I did. I went with compassion and mercy. And um Uh, I just thank God for what he did. Hallelujah. We know that God will confirm his word with miracle signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Well, our fourth point I want to make tonight um, is to uh, pray with a fully developed target. Now, what does that look like to have a fully developed target? 
I'm just going to have a sip of water here. Praise God. Now let's take a look at that. Um, if we look at Mark 11, chapter 22, uh, Mark, sorry, Mark 11, 22 to 24. Now, we all know this scripture, but I think we're going to go back a bit because I want to take a look at the fig tree. Um, I'm turning my Bible as we're speaking here. I hope you're turning your Bible and we'll do this together. Mark 11 and let's go to verse um, uh, verse 13. Let's just take a look at it. We're not going to read it, but I want you to look at how Jesus saw a fig tree and he was really excited. He was going to get some figs. It was the time of the season for figs. And this tree should have uh, should have figs on it. And he came up to tr- the tree and there was none on it. Well, it says the figs was not yet. However, well, that word is in italics. So um, the point of the matter is that Jesus cursed the fig tree. Now, I've heard stories about the fig tree and how uh, there are two d- different types of fig trees. But we'll leave that for another day. The key of this scripture is that Jesus cursed the fig tree and the fig tree died. He painted a target. He killed the fig tree because he, he released words and the fig tree died. And all of the apostles, they were just so surprised. Hallelujah. Peter brought it to the remembrance. And Jesus said, you need to have faith in God. Well, in some translation in verse 22, that scripture says, have the God kind of faith. And I want to tell you, once you're born again, you have the God type of faith. Glory to God. God has imparted his faith into you. Let's read verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and not shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Verse 24, I really like this scripture. This is amazing. Verse 30, 24, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Hallelujah. And verse 25 and 26 we'll talk about later. I want to talk about verse 24. You see, um, Jesus painted the target that a fig tree and the fig tree died. Right? It died. It withered and died. The next day it came back, it was dead. Hallelujah. And Jesus is teaching a principle here. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Glory to God. God is so merciful and so wonderful. He's given us the ability to um, to believe that we can receive them. Um, that we can have those things. But when you speak, your words have power. Your words, amen, you're a king, right? You're royalty. When you decree a word, it'll come to pass. Hallelujah. That's why we got to watch what we're saying all the time. We've got to watch those words and allow Holy Spirit to work in us and through us. But those words are very important. And, and I want to encourage you to paint a target carefully so that you can receive Uh, the word that God has uh, for you, but that also God can bring it to pass in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A fully painted target. You know, mountains move. Glory to God. Mountains change and can be cast into the sea when you release that word of life. Amen. Verse 23 says that, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have so whatsoever he saith. I love those scriptures, because there's two parts to this. That means things that need to be removed, like cancer. You remove it in the name of Jesus. You drive it out with the word. And those things whatsoever you desire, those things that you want, those things that you need in your life, like your family saved, like your children uh, living for God, like your house and um, uh, your, your job or your business or your ministry, whatever, those good things you desire, those things shall come to pass. So you remove things from your life and the things that you need are drawn to you 
by the word of God. And God is teaching a principle here. Jesus is teaching his principles here that you have to paint the target. So you need to know what you're removing and you need to know what you're desiring and you need to be specific and write it down. When you pray, pray on that target. Be specific. If you need a silver car with um, uh, with a sunroof, then pray for the silver car with the sunroof. If you need a bicycle, pray for the bicycle that you want. If you need a BMW, go for the BMW. If you need a Volkswagen, get the Volkswagen. But be clear and paint the target. Whatever it is you want. Hallelujah. And if you see people who are sick, you're called to drive out sickness with the word. You remove the mountain. And if you have debt, it's a mountain. You remove the mountain in, in the name of Jesus. You command it to go in the name of Jesus Christ. See, these are four points that I really want you to grab a hold of tonight. Amen. The first one is you pray from your position of power. Second, you pray as royalty, as a king and a priest unto God. Thirdly, you pray with confidence. Hallelujah. And fourthly, you pray with a fully developed target. What are you removing? What are you calling forth? What is it specifically? And get a list. And don't make it too long to start. We want to get three or four top things, maybe five top things that you're dealing with. And, and you hammer at it every day. You say, I declare and decree that this mountain of debt is gone in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare and decree I have, I have uh, a goodly heritage in Christ. I have my new home. I have my apartment. I have my bicycle. Whatever it is that you have decreed before. And then you thank God. Thank you, God. You heard me the first time. I declare I have my bike. I declare I have my house. I declare I have uh, whatever it is that you're, you're wanting or needing at that time. Hallelujah. And those things that you want God gone, you just declare them, God. I declare I walk in divine health. I declare all sickness has been removed from me. I declare I am free. These are ways that, and, that we pray and that we uh, release God's word so that we can be more effective, hallelujah, in our life. Well, I'm so thrilled about what God is doing. And I know that he wants to use you to pray and to see some amazing results. Amen. Now, um, I, I encourage you to make your list of five, six things, whatever, you know, a small list, and write them down. And every day, just keep decreeing those things. Uh, amen. Amen. When you drive out sickness, you drive it out. And the next time you say, thank you, Lord, by your stripes, I was healed. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I decree that sickness is far from me. I walk in divine health. I walk as a son of God. I am healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I truly walk in divine health because of the stripes of Jesus. Amen. That's how you do it. That's how you start. So I'm, I'm hoping that this is helping you. And I love to hear your comments. Can you please, please, please email me? Let me know how this has changed your life, how it has helped you. And if you have any questions, please write me. I want to know. I want to help you. Hallelujah. There's so much that needs to be done. In the next class, we'll go through the next four points to finish our first uh, section on aspects of prayer. I know that uh, God is working with you. Keep praying the Ephesians prayer over your life. God will bring it to pass. He will give you the depths of revelation and understanding that you've never tasted before. And that will just help you in every area of your life. Well, hallelujah. I want to pray for you today. Father, everyone who's heard this message today or in the days to come and months and years to come, Father, I bless them today. I declare this word will follow them all the days of their life that when they come into the prayer room or when they come to pray, whether it's their private room or corporate room, they come prepared to pray as a son of God. They come to pray in the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. They come 
hallelujah, in your love and in your ability that you have released unto them, they come expecting answers. I bless them in the glorious name of Jesus Christ. Well, praise God. Thank you for being with me today. I'm so glad you're here. I am looking forward to our next session. God bless you richly. For booking Rev. Adams' prayer requests or more information regarding our ministries, please visit our website at www.crystalwaters.ca. Message us at info at crystalwaters.ca by phone at 1-778-285-1111. Post Office Box 52562, Coquitlam Center, Coquitlam, B.C., V3B 7J4.